Hello guys, today we're going to see six important tips we have to keep in mind in the CBCT when placing implants in the bandwagon. Let's go with it. Hello guys, how are you doing? I am Juan Lara from DL Oral Surgery and with my partner in crime, Jose Luis Montpel, we are going to see today six tips to see in the CBCT for placing implants in the mandible. First thing, we always look for the inferior alveolar nerve. We cannot touch it, we cannot drill it, we cannot get really close to it because we might have an paresthesia to the, for the patient. We always keep at least two millimeters safe distance to the nerve in order not to touch it. If we think we can touch the nerve, we will go for a shorter implant, always keeping those two millimeters or doing a bone graft vertical or maybe a lateralization of the nerve. We always have to think about what kind of implant we are going to place. It's not the same a tissue uh, level implant, a bone level implant that we have to include, we have to place it subcrestally. Why? Because if we place a bone level implant, we have to place it a little bit inside, like 1-2 millimeters, and we have to keep 2 millimeters from the nerve, we have to add to the length of the implant 4 millimeters at least to be able to place that implant subcrestally and at the same time leaving a 2 millimeter space to the nerve. One tip that can be useful is just take a look at the apex of the teeth which are on the sides of where we are going to place the implant we know that the inferior alveolar nerve is always under the apex so if the tooth next to our implant has a long root we know that just placing a shorter implant at the root we are going to be always safe second tip how wide do we need the bone to place our implants in the best conditions we need at least two millimeters in each side of our implant what does that mean? If we have a 3.84 millimeters diameter implant, we are going to need two millimeters on one side and two millimeters in the other side, which leads us to have at least eight millimeters wide bone. If we don't have that much, we will have to reconstruct or bone graft the area either with a GBR, with a Curry technique or whatever technique you are more comfortable with. We are placing 3.5 millimeters implants in incisors, canines, and premolars, and 4 millimeter diameter implants in molars. Why? Because nowadays the connections of our implants are really good, so we trust a lot in these connections. We don't need like we used to have, or we used to place these huge implants, 5 6 millimeters in the molars. We don't do that anymore. Now we go for 3.5 or 4 millimeters. In molars. The more bone we have, the better. So, what happens if we have 20 millimeters to the nerve? Are we going to place a 16 millimeter implant? That is today is nonsense. We do not place those very long implants. Why? Because if we have periplantitis or we have any kind of problem like a fracture or anything, it's not the same removing a 15 millimeter implant than a 10 millimeter implant. So, unless we are going to do a post-extraction implant, there is no need to go more than 10 mm length implant. What density of uh, bone do we have? For example, in the mandible, the cortical sometimes can be really thick, really dense, but the spongious part can be almost empty of bone. And in some cases, if we drill and we place a submerged implant because it's a bone level implant, this implant, once it goes through the cortical, can fall down into the mandible and we might have a problem that is going to be difficult to solve. So always keep an eye on the CBCT and if there is a spongious part, really, really spongious, really, really empty, don't place a bone level implant. Go for a tissue level implant that you know is not going to fall inside the mandible. The fourth tip that we want to share with you today is about vascular structures. We have already talked about the alveolar nerve, but we have to keep in mind that sometimes we have intrabony arteries. Okay? This is more important when placing implants in the anterior area of the mandible, when placing an olanfor or an overdenture. It is important because sometimes those structures may bleed if we do not analyze it, we do not take care of the uh, CBCT and we do not know where they are. 
but what happens if unfortunately we drill and we hit one of these structures we're gonna have a bleeding okay do not lose your temper and at that moment place your implant implant at this moment will be your ally and will block will stop bleeding fifth tip that we want to share with you is about bone density some patients in the posterior area of the mandible they have a very dense bone okay this is not bad but you have to know that sometimes in the CVCT you may have an image that may resemble some very hypermineralized bone okay you have to keep in mind that this bone bleeds less than normal bone so you need to drill you need to do your full protocol okay for drilling and wait for a little bleeding of the uh, implant bed prior to placing your implant remember that osteointegration comes together with bleeding if our implant bed doesn't bleed the risk of no integration is higher than when we have a bleeding surface the last tip we want to share with you today is about placing implants immediate implants in the bicuspid area and why in our opinion this can be a tricky implant because sometimes we have the emergency of the mental nerve the mental foramen is normally located in between the first bicuspid and second bicuspid but it's also true that sometimes maybe a little bit more visual or a distal and when we strike a bicuspid i want to place an immediate implant we only have two three millimeters above the mental foramen that may be an issue when trying to achieve primary stability of our implant so if you have less than three four millimeters above the mental foramen we strongly recommend you to extract the bicuspid and re-entry after a couple of months for placing your implants in a prosthetically driven way it is better to wait three months prior to implant placement than to have a paresthesia of the mental nerve because you want to do all in one surgery so be very careful when placing implants in the bicuspid area okay so guys i hope you enjoyed this video remember the scalpel in your hand and the prostodontic work in your head see you soon and leave your comments see you soon.